without further ado, I just want to say thank you all. This has been quite a day. Um, I'm learning a lot like everyone else is. Um, and I have, my head is just spinning and I'm just so thankful to be a part of this. Um, so uh, without further ado, my name is Anna Warfield. I am um, an upstate New York based fiber artist. I work in, um, I work in fibers uh, to create these soft sculptural, often text-based objects um, that center on ideas of relearning um, identity, specifically um, the complexities of feminine identity um, and use poetry to kind of um, enhance uh, the objects themselves. Um, what I'm gonna do today is take you through sort of the last five years of my, my process of making um, and my artworks to show you the evolution of um, sort of where I began and where I've ended up because it's tied together. Um, but I think it it really informs what I'm doing today. Um, and so let's start with book arts. Um, so central to the things that I am interested in um, is this concept of relearning. Um, and what I mean by relearning is sort of acknowledging the fact that as adults, we maybe were taught or understood things in our youth. Um, uh, in a way that maybe doesn't have to quite stick with us <laughs> in adulthood. Um, and so a lot of my practice is around confronting um, ideas and uh, specifically around gender and sexuality um, and identity and relearning those spaces. Um, and for me, book arts became this sort of tool for relearning um, that's accessible on a very tactile level, um, specifically because we as humans understand books at the very basis to the objects that you pick up, you hold and you page through. Um, so the, there's this sort of, um, there's this baseline understanding of how to engage with the object. Um, the fabric specifically as um, the tool for or the, the medium for these books was sort of important to me uh, because I'm thinking about youth like objects. So in my personal youth, I had, things like fabric books um, and these objects that I just wanted to touch and learn from um, because of their tactility. And I'm interested in bringing um, those sort of youth-like objects into adult spaces for this um, relearning element. Um, so this is one of my books. You can see it's embroidered um, specifically as you flip through the pages. Um, they dilate um, and change and morph in color. Um, it's a hollow object, um, kind of sculptural as you move your way through it, um, but it's participatory and it changes and the interaction between you and the book is might be completely different from how someone else pages through. Um, this is another book. Um, it's harder to see. Um, it's quilted, also fabric, um, and at the center of it, uh, and in between each page is a blood orange, um, one half of it on either side. Um, and this sort of begins to emulate the idea of um, control sort of comes into play in my work or um, consent or like revisioning for yourself. So, so this book, as you page through, often people are holding it um, in their laps and it sort of becomes this x-ray or the super um, imposed visual of maybe labia onto the viewer's lap. And this kind of comes from you know, from anyone paging through. So um, a man paging through might be given a different a visceral experience than say a woman uh, going through as well. Um, bringing in dye, not lasting dye, but in this case, this piece is called Centerfold and it um, used wine dye um, that my aunt had actually made. She made me some homemade wine and I was using it um, as a medium to kind of change the colors of pages. It's a great scent when you iron it. Um, and then I shifted more also into book works because I was interested in reclaiming my voice. Um, as a woman, I think there's like sort of this gaslighting experience we have where the world kind of, uh, you know, doesn't hear us when we speak or um, kind of pushes us to the side and we feel like maybe we aren't saying things correctly or something and we're trying to fit into that space. At least that's been my experience. And so in working with books, I initially I thought that I wanted to work with language, but as you could see, that's really not <laughs> a part of anything that I was doing early on until I had this moment of, okay, let's step more realistically into it. Um, this is a this is just a, a one spread of pages from a larger book, 
um, that has a poem that is meant to encourage the act of speaking um, by articulating what it would, uh, what your mouth does when it is speaking. But at the same time, um, the words uh, kind of read like a description of a blowjob. And so in that sense, thinking about how um, women, when we take the stage, um, it sort of becomes this permission space for ogling um, and for the sexualization of women um, as they are speaking. From there, um, I transitioned a, a bit into more participatory elements beyond book arts. I was thinking about how people interact with work um, and interacting with concepts in general. Um, so this piece, I give you my words, is sort of like a Mad Lib or maybe how you would interact with refrigerator magnets, like that kind of idea. So I give you um, the sort of schematic of words that you can choose um, from a, a given pile of additional words to kind of play with. The meaning sort of, the ideas kind of behind it sort of have the same tone, um, no matter how you put it together, but it does encourage um, people to participate in the reshaping of the pattern of the words um, and therefore to engage with the idea. Same here, um, ideas of like games that you might play. Um, so cornhole is a common game um, where I'm from. And um, so you kind of understand the premise of this. You would pick up a beanbag and you would toss it. Um, and then getting larger with my works as well. Um, this piece, um, No Don't Stop, has a uh, few pages in it, but um, the main ones read and uh, different iterations of no, don't stop, stop, no, don't. Um, and the size of this particular book is the size of a twin size bed. Um, each page is the size of a twin size bed. Um, so it gives you this large visceral experience. Um, it's really bodily when you're working your way through it. Um, the uh, viewer sort of participant in the action. Now it's like less of an intimate thing. You really have to make a choice to engage with these works. Um, yeah. And this sort of transitions, and I'll talk a bit more about this later, into the concept of being larger, taking up more space, um, and, and yeah, and so I started to make larger, longer pieces that you couldn't really ignore in space, like you didn't have a choice to interact with them. Um, yeah, and so at this point, sort of with the stop, no, don't, no, don't stop piece, I'm really exploring my interest in wordplay. Um, and I, I transition more into that. These are tough to read on this particular screen, but to give you a, a sense, this is a, a separate body of work um, that it's all about commands and like slight changes in language and how that can change meaning or imply meaning. So this particular set is called 10 Commands. Um, the title references the commandments <laughs> in the Bible, um, but everything in each of these 10 um, relates to a bedroom command. So um, use your tongue, for instance, is one of them, or um, use your hips, use your hair, things like that. Um, additionally, I have a, a triptych from this series called uh, the What's It series, the What's It triptych, excuse me, um, lick it, flick it, pat it, slap it, suck it, fuck it, I don't tell you what it is. Um, no, don't stop, stop, no, don't comes back into play here, just kind of a refascination with those words. Um, this is found fabric. I was um, I wanted to work in a sort of change up the way I was thinking, and um, this fabric I thought I really loved because of the linear quality to it, sort of candy striper elements, sort of femme history to that. Um, and I wanted to kind of you know it creates a sort of M. C. Escher ish, -ish uh, aesthetic to it that you don't know what it says until you're close to it, and then when you are close to it. Um, you can read it, but it's kind of intimate and you're reading it amongst other people. So then um, similar to what I was talking about before with taking up space, I started to create these um, larger poetic works, which is more the vein that I'm working in currently. Um, they often, uh, they're suspended typically in space, kind of these like personifications of ideas or objects or beings um, to confront you in space. Um, so the words always, at least in, in this initial body, um, re reference the body um, to make you physically aware of your own body in space, of these bodies in space, and they often um, incorporate a command element. So encouragement and kind of ordering of things. Um, think louder through those parched lips was an initial one. Again, the sort of fascination with speaking, um, encouraging that, the voice, expression of the voice, um, 
speak from the back of your eyes, but like from the core. This is an additional sort of transition in this work, uh, this, this way of thinking where it's like, okay, so now I'm taking up space and I'm using, um, I'm using the gallery in a different way than I have before. Um, and now I'm thinking of how do these objects exist as their own sculptural beings beyond it being a poem existing in space. I'm thinking of, um, you know, how does the viewer interact with it, not just moving around it, but um, does the language like change how you how you view it? Do you have to turn your head to see it? So this sort of shift in language and color, um, just to give you a sense of scale, makes you kind of like get stuck in this sort of monotone explanatory language. Um, working larger once again um, and more in pink and command language, getting into body, body politics. This piece reads, um, roll, uh, tongues roll over, festered wounds, and exhale putrid bile. I made this <laughs> um, in uh, 2020, <laughs> end of the time there around the election here in the US. Um, and I made sure to complete it um, just before the inauguration of um, Mr. President Biden um, into the White House, you know, with all the things that were happening with January 6, just this kind of uh, manifestation of wanting to exhale the the putridness that was once there. Um, a section of my work transitioned into like sort of community input in collaborative poems. Um, and then now, and I'm almost done, and I think I'm right on time, um, I'm working on this um, acknowledgement of like, I had this incredible interest in finding distilled ways of defining through my poetry and my work and presenting my words in a way that was clear and concise um, and made you sit with it. Um, now I'm interested in confusing everybody with my words and kind of controlling the way that people interact um, with the pieces. Um, so this element of control is now at the forefront of my work. So um, not just making you bodily aware, but actually through the structure of the piece, the structure of the sculpture, causing you to interact with it in a particular way. So this central piece here, um, it's called uh, the way the mind's in love with contradiction. Um, and it's hard, you're, I've primed everyone to be able to read my poems. They want to read the poems, they want to read the pieces. Um, and so when they see this piece, now they like struggle to find the beginning and they're just circling it. And the whole piece is about uh, confusion and circling and spiraling. Um, and so enabling that and activating a space that way is sort of where I am at. Um, Yes, I think that is all I have, and I will keep us moving. Lovely to be here with you all. That was great, Anna. Thank you so much. Thank you, really.